Are comic book drawer boxes worth it? This is Exasperate Explains. I have thousands of comics and a number of years ago I switched over to storing them in drawer boxes and this is specifically about the collection drawer products. Let's go over some positives, some negatives, and how to put these together. They come in two sizes, short and long, but the long ones which I purchased are shorter than a standard long box. So take that into consideration if you make an order and try to decide how many you need. The biggest positive is that they make your comics easy to access. You don't have to move entire stacks of comic book boxes around to find a specific issue or file away new books. And since it's easier to access, it's easier to keep up with organizing your collection instead of just shoving them into a random box. That is really the main positive and purpose of this product. It's a very good positive, but there are certainly other things to consider. These are expensive. It's about $80 for a five pack before shipping and without any add-ons. This setup cost me hundreds of dollars because I purchased it all at once. I don't recall exactly how much overall, but was not cheap to convert everything over. Of the add-ons, I would highly recommend getting the box locks, which attach the box shells together horizontally. It gives it some structure, which will reduce the risk of it toppling over compared to if they were just singular boxes stacked on one another. I'm still honestly kind of nervous about it, but as long as you have enough weight on top, you can leave the box hanging out most of the way without tipping, even on the top row. You need several columns worth connected to do this, but it can be easily done. I will say though, getting these box locks to connect is kind of a pain. The other extra is an insert that lets you put in dividers, but more importantly, they help hold the issues up. Anyone with comics knows that a half full box can potentially damage your books if one or two slide down and then the rest topple over. But this is more dangerous with the drawer boxes specifically because you add the sliding in and out element to the process. I really think these inserts should be included because every single box also comes with the divider panels when you put them together. So if you don't use these inserts, then you just have all these extra dividers laying around. But you can kind of bend them into place to create makeshift dividers that fit on the sides just through friction, but they don't work nearly as well as the ones you can purchase. I have had these for several years now, but I do question the long-term durability. Don't get me wrong, they are well-made and sturdy, but as you pull in and out, the weight will begin shaving off little bits of paper that fall to the ground. So try to lift up as you pull the, the drawers in and out to help keep this from happening. Another thing, which is kind of counterintuitive, is that they take up a lot of space. Not that regular boxes don't, but I used to store comic boxes in a closet, which feels like it takes up less room because it's out of sight. The drawer boxes dominate any room they are in because they take up so much room and they have to be in a place where they are accessible to get to the handles, otherwise it would be pointless. They recommend going no higher than five rows and that's what I've done. I think when I first bought these though, it said D don't go above four. So I think that's changed. But either way, there's no detrimental effects to the comics and the lowest row seems to be holding up fine, even if you take the box out and it's just the shell. I would definitely not go any higher than what I've done out of fear of collapse and damaging some books though. Let's go over how these are put together. Let's go over the assembly of the box itself. If you have assembled comic boxes, this part is easy as it's pretty much like any other. Just fold the ends up and then fold the outer parts over and lock them into place. That's pretty easy. Next, you have the outer shell. And the end you're looking for here is the one with all the large flaps. 
likewise, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just fold the ends in, fold over, and then fold this outer part over, and it latches in just like that. The first time you do it, you may have to kind of break the perforated areas that are there already. And next, important to remember, use the box locks now, because if not, you'll have to disassemble this to put them in place. So the little holes are already there and you just need to place them inside in the correct locations and you can shift and twist them after they are installed so you don't have to worry about the proper orientation at this point. Then you grab the inner shell, which is important, and you kind of fold it together so it's angled like this and then you can just really slide it in without issue. Sometimes the box locks fall out in this point. You have to go put them back in, which is annoying. Then once you get the inner shell in, you just shove the bottom part apart and fold these outer flaps. And there you have it. It's a fully assembled drawer. The only thing left is to put the other inner drawer in. When connecting the box locks, you obviously want to make sure that they're oriented perpendicular to each other so the teeth can grab. And it's easier to have the next box over empty so you can get them to lock into place. And they do have a very audible click as you put them in, which you can hear. So that's obviously an advantage there. And then once you have them all in, they are together pretty stoutly, but they also still can be pulled apart. You can also see they have a space where you can write the names of comics pretty easily but they change so often when I do have them labeled, I usually just use sticky notes and then change them as needed instead of marking these permanently when I know it's just going to change, you know, six months from now. The boxes can come all the way out of the shells. They don't really want to because there's kind of a little ridge or lip, but you can take them out and leaving them in is usually easier, though it does make it a little bit harder when you are doing the very back of the box. I recently moved with all these and I emptied the shelves and basically separated the box locks with the weight of the shelves to move them in chunks, about three or four across. And they reassembled without any real issues other than just the frustration of trying to get the box locks to connect. I know I've mentioned some small complaints and negatives about these products, but overall, if you have enough comics that you are considering getting this and you can dedicate the floor space to it, I would say it is probably worth it. Like I said at the start, this is for the collection drawer company only. I know there's other varieties out there, but I've never seen them or given them a try. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Do you have this product? If so, what do you think of it? Do you have any issues or specific positives and negatives I didn't mention? Leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, share the video, like the video, and thanks for watching. Bye.